Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Convention Confessional. My name is Katie Hunt, and I'm here to guide you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of the convention world. Uh, and I'm writing solo this week because I have gone to another convention, which, I mean, right? All I talk about is AB on here and like other conventions that I've worked at in the past, uh, but I actually had the opportunity to go to another local convention uh, because the gods shine down on me and I got another day off from work. So thank you, Jeebus. Uh, that's like a once in a new moon situation <laughs> these days. Uh, work's busy. Work at a restaurant. Very busy. But um, got to go up to Granite State Comic Con. It's their 20th anniversary this year. And uh, if you live in New Hampshire, it's up in the Manchester area. So it's right in the city there. And I know the convention center very well because back when I worked for the New Hampshire convention, uh, many, many years were spent at that hotel and expo center. And it's a nice little area, actually, because it's right in the center of kind of downtown Manchester, right near a bunch of restaurants and food. And it's like a big open area across the street, like a park area. So it's good for cosplayers to do photo shoots and things. The hotel is very nice. Uh, it's just been redone over from a Radisson to a Doubletree Hilton. And it's funny because I haven't been there since the construction's been redone. So it's a little fancier inside. Um, they've definitely done some construction in the lobby and things, blocked off some areas that were trouble areas for our convention in the past. <laughs> so yeah, like they, they pretty much closed things off and made it a little bit more private. People can't just hang out in their um, executive areas, I guess is what we're going to call them. But anyways, uh, the expo center next door is a pretty good size, a uh, big glassed in room. We always used to call it the fishbowl and that's where all of the big signings were and all of the dealer's room things. And then outside of that, they had like a kid zone area, uh, lots of kids activities and things. Um, it's a really cute little setup. And like I said, if you're not looking for a huge big deal convention to go to, I highly recommend it because it's just the perfect size. Definitely can get through it in like a day or two, depending on what you're going there for. Uh, but let's talk about the day that I had, shall we? Because it was a day. So got up early. I only live about 40 minutes to an hour from Manchester where I am in New Hampshire. So nice drive right up 101. Uh, parked right away. No issues. It was a little full, crazier than it usually is. But again, people got there probably before I did or were staying at the hotel. Uh, there's a parking garage right next door. Got downstairs, walked right through into the registration line, uh, opened up at 10 o'clock. And again, it's like you go in, they got their like little information desk. They've got the booth across where it's like, you've already got your badge, just grab it here uh, and a weapons check and all that. And then, yeah, you go in and I mean, how can you beat it? It's only, it was 30 bucks at the door and $25 online for the day. It's like conventions nowadays are getting so expensive, like tickets, prices. I know everybody has to pay for like, you know, certain things at conventions like guests and putting on the convention, especially in huge like venues that are out there. But it's just nice to be able to go to a convention for a day and only spend a couple of dollars and not feel like you're breaking the bank getting into it. So it was nice, like $30, completely reasonable for a Saturday price, especially for the size of the convention. Totally love it. So that was nice. Uh, got my little orange wristband, which is funny. They don't do badges, but I guess that makes sense. Cause if you're only going for like a day, why would you get like a whole like plastic badge? It's just more money. So the, uh, the wristband thing is a good idea. Weekend people definitely had their own badges, but again, you paid for the whole weekend. So of course you're going to get a, a whole badge. That makes sense. And then, yeah, just walking around. It's like comics everywhere. It's like, it's a comic con. It's not strictly anime. It's a comic con. So it can be anything, which I seem to prefer more these days because I'm a huge movie person. I still love anime. I still love my animes, but I'm a very golden age anime person. So new stuff takes a lot for me to get into. I've mentioned that a few times on the show here. Not that I don't love anime. I just sometimes it's like, okay, the new show is dragging again. I get PTSD from like bleach. <laughs> Like, this is going to be a thousand episodes and I'm going to get stuck watching a thousand episodes of something. My 20 episodes, I'm here for it. Uh, but I'm more into like the movies, the comics, big movie person since a very young age. So this is more of my, my tea and comic books and things like that. 
And there was so much variety and things there as far as like, there's like people that did a huge like Pokemon wall, but then like nobody else had the Pokemon plushies. So it was nice because it's like, okay, so you're just doing Pokemon stuff and like Mario Kart and Nintendo stuff. Cool. And then there's tables with Magic the Gathering. There were tables that had a lot of 3D printed stuff on them. Oh my God. Some of the 3D prints people make are insane. Like I want a 3D printer, but I'll probably end up just making like a plastic ball of goo and string. But these people are making buddhas out of different characters and then there was a little teeny tiny mount rushmore that was the golden girls which <laughs> i found the guy on etsy i will definitely probably be buying that for myself at some point because i didn't at the convention and i have regrets i have so many regrets it was so cute it was like mount rushmore and betty white and i miss her and of course Bo and all them um but yeah like people had different like 3d prints and then of course like all the artwork is gorgeous i mean how do you choose what to buy because it's all wicked pretty um there were people that had a lot of harry potter stuff and of course good old new hampshire let's buy some live steel there was a huge <laughs> vendor against the wall and they used to come to the new hampshire convention too but they sell like swords and knives and a whole bunch of real sword things that could hurt a person and i just gotta laugh about it because you gotta think about you go to a convention the weapons policy and you can barely have a nerf gun at the door but here we are selling you this whole long sword <laughs> like mm, that makes sense yep because someone's definitely not going to be like oh well i can just walk around the dealer's room with this now but god forbid i bring my nerf gun to this convention because absolutely not <laughs> uh. The way the bars are set sometimes, it's always hilarious to me. And then, of course, in that dealer's room, there are all of the comic book artists, too. Several guest artists there, or featured artists there. Uh, they all selling their books and prints and things. And it's just really nice to be like, oh my gosh, you're like you wrote this or this, or I've seen this around. Or uh, one of the gentlemen that I saw there was selling uh, Young Hellboy comics. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've definitely read this before. Ended up buying a pin for him that just said meh on it <laughs> because it spoke to me. <laughs> it just, it speaks to me. Meh. <laughs> I got to put it on something that I can show off all the time. Uh, but all of them so nice and just so grateful that you stopped by and look at their stuff. And I've always said that about going like to conventions and things. You go into the dealer's room. Well, the dealer's room, I say dealer's room. I mean like artist alley artist alley and you look at like go look at everybody's stuff don't necessarily have to like purchase every single thing that you see obviously but just acknowledge people's artwork because people have put a lot of hard work and time into their stuff like if you really like something something really speaks to you obviously give artist people your money because they are start like, you know starving artists <laughs> they put a lot of work and time into their company and they would like your wares to you know survive and justify all of their work and I'm 100% behind that because I feel like the artist alley is where I spend most of my money at conventions these days. But just acknowledge people's work. And I think they appreciate that too. I mean, money's good and all, but just knowing that people are like, oh my gosh, this stuff is really nice. Like, I really like it. And just, you know, it's always like that awkward pass by when you're looking at people in the artist alley because you're like, oh no, like what if I didn't look at your stuff? Or is that just me? It's probably just me. Honestly, I'm just like, oh no, we've made eye contact. I don't feel like I spent enough time at your booth. I don't want you to think that I don't like your stuff. Ah, that internal panic. That's the anxiety, kids. That's what that is. <laughs> that constant, your mind's going. <laughs> But yeah, so, so many prints and things. And then the best part about this convention this weekend was that uh, my friends Elise and Greg and their daughter Sabrina were able to come. And I know Sabrina has been to a few conventions over the years. She's eight. Um, and she's gone to a few things with her parents, like Rock and Shock. Uh, this was probably, I would say, her first kind of Comic-Con-ish convention. I feel like she had a very good time. It was very nice to share that with her. Uh, you know, she's still young so a lot of it's kind of a little bit over her head i feel like as far as me and the guests and stuff go um not as excited as mom dad and auntie about meeting the guests that we're gonna get into shortly but you know they're present you know un understanding that it's important to us i suppose uh, it's there for the toys definitely um so much to look at and i think she's a very big people watcher um, but it was just nice to like be able to share an experience like that with her. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that more in the future with her. 
Um, if it ends up being her thing, great. If not, meh. but you gotta, you know, extend the offer when you can, as far as things go. And it's like nice that she's at an age now where she can experience these things and you can kind of see what her, like, you know, gauge a reaction, I guess. Uh, I tried to push her into theater and I'm still not sure that was a good idea, but she did it. <laughs> this seems to be more of her thing now because, you know, kids see toys and they're like, Ooh, there's toys here. So it's like, okay, fine. I'll take that. <laughs> Let's go to the big place. I had toys. It's like, yep. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We can go to the big place with toys. Perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a really great experience walking around. Lots of stuff, lots of cool things to look at. Um, but the reason I was there this weekend, I am a huge Hocus Pocus fan. Like since day one, I've always loved that movie. But I'm also a huge Doug Jones fan. Now, if you tell me that you don't know who Doug Jones is, you're lying because you know who Doug Jones is. You may not like recognize him by face perhaps, but you will definitely recognize him by character. Now, Doug Jones has been in the business for about, I'm going to say almost 30-ish years. Uh, roles you might recognize him in consist of and are not limited to Billy in Hocus Pocus, uh, the Pale Man and Fano in Pan's Labyrinth. He was just in the shape of water as the amphibian man. He's Abe Sapien in Hellboy and Hellboy 2. And fun fact, he actually wasn't the voice of Abe Sapien in the first movie, um, but he was in the second movie. So he had to act that character and um, make the lip flaps for the gentleman that was voicing him. So that's even harder. Um, he's now in Star Trek and he's Saru. Uh, he was the moon in the McDonald's commercials. He's been countless like creatures and monsters in Guillermo del Toro movies. Uh, in the episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, called Hush, where everybody had lost their voice, he played one of the gentlemen, like one of those creepy guys that was stealing people's hearts. <sighs> he's been in Arrow. He's been in... Okay, everything, guys. He's literally been in everything. Oh, he was a silver surfer. So if you tell me you don't know who Doug Jones is, you need to pause this episode, go into IMDb and look at it and go, oh, never mind. <laughs> He's everything. Tall, skinny, lanky, a really good mime actor, creature character actor. I assume in Hollywood, he's probably got a permanent bust of his head somewhere that they just create all of the prosthetics to put onto him because... My God, he's been so many creatures. And not only that, he is the nicest human being I have probably ever met. Because yes, folks, I got to meet him this weekend. And it's like, you'd think somebody that does that many credits in like movies and things, it's like he's going to go to a small New Hampshire convention. Yes, he is. Because again, nicest human in the entire world. So I found out he was going... And of course, at the time, I'm just like, great, probably going to have to work. I'm not going to be able to make it up there. And then again, the cosplay gods above shone down on me and gave me the day off so that I could go and meet him. And it was awesome. Got in line. It was a pretty long line. And the thing is with him is that it's not just a here, sign this. Here's a quick picture. See you later. Like he actually talks to you for a few minutes. So you, you get the experience. And I always appreciate that because anybody with a line like that or anybody that goes to these conventions could totally just be like, yep. Okay, cool. Thanks for paying me. Here's your thing. See you later. Bye. Oh, picture, you know, and see you later. No, not that experience. Never that experience. And it's fine sitting in line because you're talking to people and they're all talking about how they love his movies and how they love him. Because, I mean, again, who couldn't? Nicest man ever. Um, and then, of course, I'm having, like, this internal crisis because now we're getting closer to the desk. I'm like, oh, my God, i got to figure out what 8 by 10 I want. And when I tell you, so many options. Like, he had them spread out and numbered on the table of all of these creatures he's ever been. Plus, there was a book on top of that. So if you didn't see what you liked on the table... There was a whole damn book <laughs> of like different headshots and photos and movies. And it's like, oh my God, this is, this part's overwhelming. <laughs> Forget the rest of it. Like some people online, you could bring your own stuff to have signed. Like a lot of people had his Funko Pop of Billy, which not to get off topic, but my friends and I were talking about it while we had the time in line to talk about it. And you know, they make Funko Pops of all these different characters from movies and TV 
Hello. <laughs> the co-host is here. All these different Funko Pops for all these characters. And you got to think, it's like, God, he's been in so many movies. This dude has to hold the record for the most Funko Pops made of a character he's done. He has to. Between all of like, the things that he's done through the years and they've decided to make Funkos for, and now like they're making Funkos for for all the recent things, he's got to have the most. I, I just hands down, he's got to have the most. So you got Funko Pops you can sign, all these different um, pictures and movie posters, because again, some of the vendors in the room are selling movie posters um, to different things that he's been in. Uh, and then he also had different collectible items on the table just for Granite State um, to sign. Some of them were charity products. So if you bought them, they were bigger ticket items, but some of the money was going to different charities, but they were like custom made uh, pins from Granite State Comic Con that he was signing of Saru from Star Trek. I ended up picking, even though I love Billy. I love Billy. He is my favorite character in Hocus Pocus. Don't get me wrong, Winifred's everything, but Billy, you guys, so funny. And the fact that he is coming back for Hocus Pocus 2, this is not sponsored, but the fact that he is coming back for Hocus Pocus 2 is made this whole movie, no matter what it is, everything to me. <laughs> I love Billy. Um, I didn't pick a Billy shot because <laughs> I was like, really? I didn't pick a Billy shot because, you know, some of your your pictures from like old 90s movies and things like no matter what you do you just picture to picture just doesn't it's not a high quality picture it's not anybody's fault it's just you know you're trying to take something that's almost 30 years old and make it into an 8 by 10 and the quality of pictures back in the day not it so i was like okay as much as i love billy the abe sapien picture that i picked out from hellboy 2 is gorgeous and i love abe i love hellboy such good movies um so of course I'm in line, pay for whatever we need to pay for. And it's just like, I'm sitting there going, okay, we're going to be cool. It's fine. This is fine. You're fine. Like it's cool. Like I'm usually very, very good with guests. There are certain guests and we've already talked about it that I'm like Neh, around. I'm like, nope, this is fine. And then you get to him and he just smiles at you. And it's like, oh my God, you're so cute. And you're so nice. And he's like, how are you? Oh, we've got Abe. And I'm like, yeah. And I mentioned that I do like Hocus Pocus. And then he talked about how um, at the convention the day before, they had offered this VIP uh, bus tour down to Salem. And I'd seen it online advertised. And I had had a moment where I thought about purchasing it but then again who knew I was going to have a day off in the weekend to begin with and basically you paid to go down to Salem Massachusetts with him to go see all the filming locations for Hocus Pocus and you had lunch with him and then you came back and you did the convention and it was like okay like that sounds a really cool time but he was talking about it he's just like oh yeah I got to go to Salem and I'd never been down to Salem before and of course I'm thinking to myself of course you didn't get to go to Salem because all of your stuff was filmed on the soundstage out in California, like you didn't actually get to see Salem because Billy's part was not that big. I mean, like it's big, but it's not like that big that they needed to have him running down the streets in like Salem, Massachusetts. And all of the indoor stuff was filmed out in California. They just used Salem for like some of the exterior stuff. So he's like, I got to be my own little tourist while I was down there. I was like, wow, this is cool. And it's just so cute to see him be like, wow, this is where the film took place. Never been here. <laughs> um, and then he was signing my picture and of course he's like, oh, how do you spell Katie? And I'm like, oh, it's uh, with a Y because he'd asked me if it was an I. He goes, oh, okay, this is why, you know, why we asked. I just want to make sure. And I thought that I was going to be funny. And I was like, oh, you know, my mom didn't trust me with that extra letter. And <laughs> he looks up at me and he just smiles and takes my hand. And he goes, oh, <laughs> bless you. Like Doug Jones has sympathy for my terrible joke <laughs> or he really thinks there's something wrong with me. I don't know. Either way, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. So we signed it and it was adorable. And then he came right up from around the table and I got several pictures with him, which I probably will post one on the YouTube channel or definitely post one when this episode goes up. Uh, not that I haven't littered my social media with them already, but it was such, he was so nice and then he's like oh let's do an Abe pose and then we're gonna be cute and like make this cute little smiley pose and then I got a hug which there's nothing to the man 
there's nothing to him. Like he's he's literally the skinniest thing I've ever seen. Tall as hell, skinny as hell. But I guess you're all those monsters and everything, and you gotta just you take good care of yourself, obviously. And he's just again got pictures with my friends Elise and Greg. They didn't get an autograph because they've met Doug before. I'm jealous. This is like their second experience with him. Um, and their pictures came out adorable as well. And then, of course, we had to move on and be on our way. But it was like the highlight of my entire day. Like, I'm still giddy from it. This has been a few days later. And I'm still sitting here like, hee, 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 I met Doug Jones. <laughs> I went home, immediately watched Hellboy and Hocus Pocus because, of course, I did. Um, so, yeah. So, that was awesome. And that was probably like the highlight of my weekend as far as meeting guests go. It's been a while since I've met somebody that I was like really, 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 really excited about. So, that was nice. Uh, and then there was a few other people guesting there. Uh, the girl who played Elizabeth from Hocus Pocus was there. Um, she was very nice. And I felt bad because she was parked right next to Doug. And, of course, she's got a few people in her line. But everybody's in Doug's line. So, it's like obviously it's you can kind of see who the favorable person of the cast was that weekend, <laughs> which I'm like, Oh, but you know, she had people going up to her and getting stuff signed after they, like they went through Doug. So I'm like, okay, well that's, that's good. Um, and then, um, let's see who else. Oh, uh, Julian Glover was there. Uh, and again, one of those people that I wasn't sure if I knew him and then I felt stupid after cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, I do know who this is. Uh, some Star Trek movies, Game of Thrones and the voice of Aragog in, um, Harry Potter, and the Chamber of Secrets, the big spider, big spider guys. So I was like, ah, oh, that's who that is. And then, okay, I don't want to rip on anything because he was very nice. So I'm not going to use a name, but we were at the convention and my niece is a huge um, cartoon fan. And she loves Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And one of the voice actors from Ninja Turtles was there. And of course, I'm not saying I'm not going to use any names, but you can definitely look up who was there this weekend. So very nice guy. Got in his line. We're waiting for the autograph because she wants to meet him. <laughs> he was a few minutes late coming downstairs. And I say a few minutes late and I mean it. Not like, oh, it was an hour. Like we were there forever. We were not. It was only a few minutes past the time he was supposed to come back downstairs. And everybody is allowed to have a break by all means, especially at conventions like this where you spend 90% of your day downstairs signing stuff for people and meeting guests and everything. That's a lot. It's overwhelming. I totally get taking a few minutes for yourself to go and eat and chill out and de like, you know, de-stress. He took the de-stressing part very seriously, I believe. <laughs> so because here he comes and he comes up and he has his dog with him and the dog is adorable and he goes to the desk and I, I want to say baked off his mind <laughs> like he's high as hell he has to be he has to be high as hell so nice though like not not it wasn't weird it was just wow <laughs> and of course my niece is young and has no idea she's just probably like oh this is how this guy is that's fine he signed my picture and he was wicked nice and got a picture with me and the whole time i'm just standing there going did you leave any weed for anybody else <laughs> like even a little bit and we like walked away from that and she was just like he was so nice we're like mm -hmm. i'm just looking at my friend elise like holy shit <laughs> it's like and part of me's just like good for you dude like if that's what you need to get through the weekend like all the power to you because he's still a functioning person it was just a very slow functioning person <laughs> it was just, he was having a good time good for him <laughs> and again picture got signed all good she's thrilled it's just a funny story now to be like wow it's been a while since i've seen someone that that high <laughs> but anyways so that part of the convention center there's a whole other side of the convention center and we'd wander around this for a bit. And of course I was like, Hey, you guys want to go see the other side in the armory? And they're like, Oh, you mean the knives? I'm like, no guys, there's, there's a place called the armory because again, I've worked at this convention center before and that's what the place is called. They're like, Oh, wow. so we go. And that's where all of the, um, one of the drawers, the drawers, the artists, <laughs> the illustrators, words are hard. Okay. Words are very hard. I know this is a person. Words are hard illustrators. 
that's the word for uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was there. Uh, and he's a New Hampshire local from Dover. And that side of the armory was all his line. And the line was like wrapped around for him to get signed. It was crazy. Uh, but next to him as well, heading into that room, there was the Mandalorian base where all the Mandos were there. And you can do pictures with them. That was cool. And then in the inside, on the other side of him, was the 501st, which I'm sure if you've listened to this podcast before, you know Doug and all of his friends and um, his girlfriend Kate and things. Big, big 501st people. And my friend uh, Colleen there as well. So all the Jedis and the and the Stormtroopers and the Ewoks and the <laughs> everybody's there, all the robots. Uh, and they also had... Uh, uh, Boba Fett there this weekend and that was really cool he wants to come up from the the Mando base to come over and say hey uh, so that was awesome and uh, my niece got a bunch of pictures with that and all the, the droids and the Jedis and they always have a, such a nice setup it's so cool like they had a little less space this year because usually they're on the side where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy is uh, but obviously he needed all the space for all of his uh, TMNT stuff so they got like a smaller corner this year, but it was still, they made it work. You know, they had a lot of good setup going on and backdrops and they had the throne from the book of Boba Fett, which was so cool. I'm trying to convince my niece to get on that. And she was all like, eh, I don't want to sit on that. But, but when it came to Grogu, she was there for Grogu. So that was nice. <laughs> and yeah, like there was a setup from a company. They made the, I want to say layer, I guess. I don't know if you call like a good guy's place a layer, but the sewer set up for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the couch and Splinter. And they had a bunch of props out. So we got some pictures there. And yeah, it was just like I said, like an overall really great experience and convenient that we left the convention center for a little bit because there's restaurants everywhere. Got to eat food right away because we were getting hangry from walking around. And then we dove back in and we, um, you know, got a few more things in the dealer's room. Cause you always, again, you always want to walk the dealer's room in the artist alley before you completely commit to a purchase, unless there's something you can't absolutely not live without. Uh, and I didn't really purchase a lot. Like I got a movie poster of the original movie poster for Hocus Pocus that I thought about buying before I met Doug, but then I was like, nah, I don't know if I want him to sign this. And then I was like, nah, I should have had him sign that, but all good. Um, and then I have my, you know, my signature thing. And then, yeah, like there was a couple plush plushies bought for the eight year old and, <laughs> you know, some other autographs were done. And, and then we got to go home cause we're right down the street from all of it. And it was just a really nice, good time, a really good convention. Um, funny enough, we had the kid with us and we didn't even really check out the kid zone, but they had all of the Disney characters over there helping out like Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Moana, um, Merida was there at one point, but we never took her over there because she was having such a good time with the rest of it and sticking around with us. I was like, oh, well, but it's nice that they have that so parents can, you know, drop their kids off there while they go and look around the dealer's room or if they brought kids with them to work like for the weekend, at least they'll have something to do if the rest of the convention isn't really their jam yet or they're not old enough to really like get it. So that's nice for them to have something like that for the kids. And yeah, I mean, if you're in the area, if you're in the New Hampshire area and you want a good time where they have a decent selection of, of guests and things to do, I would very much recommend Grand State Comic Con. Um, this is my second time going to it. It's been around for 20 years. It's only my second time going to it. And again, not because it's not any good. I just didn't realize it was a thing for so long. And then finally, through the miracle of social media, it kind of bounced up one day. Um, went a few years ago. And I just up like Hamilton. And that was the other thing, too. I'll get to that. I'm jumping. I'm like, bye, remembering things suddenly. <laughs> I dressed up as Hamilton, walked around, and met up with the 501st people. And Doug was there and had a good time that time. But walking around by yourself at a convention sometimes can be a little, a little sad lame. In my, in you know, for me, anybody else, I'm sure, does it all the time. And they're just fine. But I like going around with people because it's just nice to have somebody to share the experience with. Um, but that was the thing about this convention is I didn't dress up this time. It's probably the first time I've ever gone to a convention and I didn't dress up at least a little bit. I just, I didn't do it. And mostly because one, it was last minute and I didn't realize I was even going to be able to go. Um, 
And then I just couldn't find any costume stuff because I'm still in the process of unburying my life from moving. Uh, but two, I just I, like, I didn't have anything to wear. <laughs> I didn't have anything. To, I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do or where or what I'm going to do. And then you have to get up and you have to go. And it's like, I don't have time to even get like dressed into anything that I have that simple. And I was upset because uh, my hair is being grown out right now, which probably doesn't sound like anything to any of you, but it's a big deal for me. Um, because I like having my short hair, but I'm also going to like a wedding in about a month. So it's better to have longer hair when you're getting in a dress or whatever. And I'm like, I don't want to wear a wig to a wedding. That's stupid. So, you know, like my hair is not the right length to be like a quick Tony Stark. Cause I totally could have just thrown that on and I'm like, it's fine. I'll just go. We're only going for a little bit. And what happens at this convention that, and that I go to conventions and you always hope you're like, Oh, I'm going to run into like a couple of Avengers. Maybe I'll run into like an Avenger or two and maybe you'll get a picture with them. That'd be great. Everybody and their mother was dressed up like an Avenger at this convention. Like we could have had a full group. There was regular Captain America and there was Sam Captain America, uh, both of which I love. And then there was like three different Thors. One of them was Ragnarok. One of them was like original Thor. And one of them was Lebowski Thor, which is probably my favorite Thor. Oh, one of those Thors actually came up to my niece too and handed his hammer and was like, are you worthy? And she held it and it was like, ah, you're worthy. <laughs> it was cute. I was like, oh, and then like there was Natasha's and there was like, there was so many Avengers, but you know which Avenger there wasn't? There was no Tony Stark. And I'm just like, oh. I could have completed the group in many respects. There was even a Hulk. There was a whole Hulk walking around like full on, like big suit. I just, that was the universe going, this is what you get for not dressing up. This is what you get for not being a cosplayer today. I was like, yeah, I get it. Thanks universe. You're the best. Thanks for shoving that down my throat. So the moral of the story is that I'm never going to a convention even for a day again and not wearing some kind of a costume because <sighs> felt like the odd duck out. I felt like a normie. It was weird. It was weird not being dressed up. Mm, I didn't like it. <laughs> Never doing it again. But other than that, that's my own personal thing. That's nothing against the convention whatsoever. That's just, I'm stupid. So there you go. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, make sure you like and share and tell your friends about it. If you have a story and you want to come on the show, please get a hold of me. Uh, leave us a message. Send us a tweet. Uh, give us an email. All of our information is on our Facebook group over on our YouTube. I know, Wash. We got to say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. And we hope to see you next time. Have a good night. Bye.